Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So we are continuing our look at going through this past paper. This is free on Revision Village. You can click the link below if you want to find this paper on Revision Village. We are now on question four. Before I get started, please consider subscribing. It does help the channel grow. Please press the link down below. And you can press the bell button, of course, and that will give you notifications when there is a new video, IB, IGCSE, or otherwise. Right, let's get started. So we have a Voronoi diagram here. So the site AB, well B is not shown yet, CD in the Voronoi diagram shows rainfall recording gauges on a large corn farm in Texas, USA. Gotta love that context for the applications course. And we're given a Voronoi diagram here. Uh, first of all, site B is missing from the diagram and we need to write down its coordinates for one mark. So remember that this line here represents the perpendicular bisector of C and then some point B in here, where B and C have to be the same distance away. So notice that this is one square away from this line, so our point B needs to also be one square away on the other side. Okay, so we need to look at the perpendicular bisector in between, and these have to be the same distance away, giving us our B coordinate. So for part B, we need to calculate the area of the cell C. So we have a triangle here. Remember the formula for the area of a triangle is half base times height. Our base will be this length here. Our perpendicular height will be this height here. So to work out the area, we need to do the half base times height. We don't need to go any more complicated for this question. So we're going to do a half times, well, the base here going from two to eight is six. And then the height going from six to two is four. And so we need to work out half times 24. You can use a calculator, of course, and that's going to be equal to 12 square as well, kilometers squared. Again, always check the units. We are actually working in kilometers, so 12 square kilometers. Good, good. And then the next step is to find the distance from point E98. So let's find where that is. So nine along and eight upwards. So this is our point E. And we need to find the distance from there to the nearest rainfall recording gauge. So remember, in a Voronoi diagram, what these cells represent is the area in which that particular um, site is the closest to it. So in this particular cell here, B is going to be our closest rainfall gauge. So we need to find the distance, and let me mark this in green, between B and E, like so. And the way we do that is some Pythagoras. Back to the good old Pythagoras. So we can form a right angle triangle with the green line as our hypotenuse and then use Pythagoras. So to work out the green line, so to work out the distance BE, we're going to work out the square root of, well, this distance here is going from five to uh, five to nine, so that's four, and then the height will be one squared, so that's the height from seven to eight. And so this will be equal to, well, four squared is 16, one squared is one, 16 plus one is 17. And so on our graphical calculator or another calculator, we work out the square root of 17. So you can use the normal scratch pad for this. And all we do is click on control and the X square button, that gives us the square root. We type one seven, and then we read off our answer to three significant figures, which will be 4.12. So let me pop that in. 4.12 kilometers. And always say what you're rounding to. Generally, the standard is three significant figures, but just make sure you say that as well, just to guarantee those marks. Okay, so we've got five, seven, 
the 12 kilometers squared, 4.12. And so for this question, the table below shows measurements of the average monthly rainfall in millimeters each of the following recording gauges. So A, B, C, and D. So for example, A is 43 millimeters, B here is 38 millimeters, C is 56 in the middle, and lastly D is 49, which is here. And you need to estimate the average monthly rainfall at point F 1.6, where we're going to use the nearest neighbor idea. So 1.6, if we mark that on our diagram, one across, six up, is right here. This falls within cell A, so we take A as our answer. So if I go back, A was 43, so our answer will be 43 millimeters, which is our correct answer. Uh, just a point though, however, say we had uh, a point G, for example, that lies on 4.4, 4, for example, on the line, then we take the average of A and C, because this is the border between A and C. Likewise, if we had 6.2 in this question, we take the average of A, C, and D from our table. Okay, so you need to be a little bit careful with using that nearest neighbor analysis. Okay, all good. So let's continue the answers are here as well. Okay, and question five. So we have a sinusoidal model here. So the water depth D in meters in a harbor on a particular day can be modeled by this sine equation where T is the elapsed time in hours since midnight. So we've got T between zero and 24, so it fills up in a whole day. And the first thing we need to do is to draw a graph of D versus T on the grid below. This is simply a GDC question. So we open up our GDC. So to get the graph function, just click on on, new, and it'll open up a new graph document. We're going to type this function in, so three sine 30. Now we're gonna put x because our variable is x plus five. And we get a graph, we don't get quite the view that we want here. So we'll need to change the window settings. So we get zero to 10 just a little bit over 10 so we can see what's going on for the y and then 0 to 24 for the x. We go to menu, go to window zoom, window settings, and we change the x from 0 to a little bit beyond 24. And for the y, we are going to go from 0 all the way to, we'll go to 12 so we can see what's going on. Now, in order to draw a sketch, it is quite useful to actually find what are called critical points. So one thing I can use here is something called trace, which is a really useful function. And by using trace, we'll actually mark on where the maximum is, for example, and also mark on the minimum, the maximum here as well, but also the y-intercept where we start from. So we're going to start from 0, 5. Then we can use the analyze graph maximum minimum functions click before the maximum, after the maximum, we actually read off these maximum points. And we can do the same with minimum, so analyze graph minimum, click before, we click after. We want to find this maximum, menu, analyze graph, maximum, click before, click after. And the last minimum, menu, analyze graph, minimum, click before, click after, and then we have all these points here. So when we draw our sketch, we actually got really lots of information. So we start at five, we're gonna go up to three eight, we're gonna go down to nine two. I'm terrible at sketching, but it's really easy to do once you know these specific points. So we go up to 15 eight, and then finally 21 two, and we'll continue a little bit after that as well. So even though I'm not the best sketchist in the world, I've got those critical points here that helps me then draw our sketch. And in fact, we've actually worked out part B for free, because it wants us to find the lowest and highest depths of water in the harbor and the times when they occur. So the maximum, so our 
maximum of our depth, so I'm going to write D max, well that's going to be equal to 8 and it's measured in meters and this happens when T is equal to 3 and 15 our X values. So I can write that in. And our minimum, so D min, well that's going to be equal to, apologies for the writing, well that's going to be equal to 2 meters, a Y coordinate, and that occurs when T is equal to 9 and 21. Okay, so we have our answers there. Just using your GDC, you get four marks immediately. Now a large boat has a draft, so of 2.5 meters, that's how high it goes on, on the boat, and decide whether the boat will be entered, able to enter the harbor at 8 p.m. So we know it has a draft of 2.5 meters, and we want to work out whether it can open, go to the harbor at 8 p.m. So we start at zero here, and now we need to think, okay, 8 p.m. during the day, okay, what would that be? Well, 8 p.m., that's the equal to on the 24-hour clock of 20, yeah? so 20 hundred hours. So if we start at midnight, then we want to look for the value of t equals 20. At the moment, it's quite hard to see exactly whether that's going to be more than 2.5 or less than 2.5. So the way we do this is we put 20 into our equation here. So we'll need to go to the scratch pad for this. So we can go to on, scratch pad, and make sure it's in degrees. Okay, you don't want it being in, in rads. You want it to be in degrees. And now we just simply type in 3 sine 30 times, well, the value of 20, close brackets, plus 5. And we get the value of 2.4019. Let me write that down. Four zero one nine. Now this number is less than 2.5. So have a think at home. What does this value, 2.4, so I know at 8 p.m. that the depth of water is 2.4, will that allow a boat with a draft of 2.5 meters in? Have a think, stop the video, 10 seconds, what do you think? Okay, well, because the water is at roughly 2.4 meters, it will not be able to enter the harbor at 8 p.m. So because that number 2.4 is less than 2.5, it means the boat has not enough water to actually go into the harbor. So it's important, as you see in the answers here, to actually write a context sentence to show that you've got a good understanding of the question. It is a two mark question. So one for the calculation we did, and then one for a conclusion, it cannot go into the harbour. Okay, hope you found the video good. Again, please like, please subscribe. It's really well appreciated, and we'll continue next time. Hope to see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.